Hello and welcome to the Screen Chronicles. I'm Colby. With me as always is Steve. There have been good trilogies in the past. The original Star Wars, The Godfather, Lord of the Rings, Back to the Future, The Mighty Ducks. But all hail in comparison to what you are about to witness today. Because we have Yeppa Beck Larson back on the Screen Chronicles for a third time. Yeppa, welcome back. Thank you. I'm just let, let it pause for some applause and stuff like chanting. Oh, of course. And... Absolutely. We'll wait till everyone dies down. <laughs> okay. Okay, everybody. Okay, we got to get going here. So, all right. Uh, People. <laughs> just pause pause the video and, and chair. Uh, yes, like... Pause it now and, and do your standing ovation and then uh, we'll keep going. <laughs> hey, thanks, guys. thanks for coming on again, though. Yep. We, we love yeah, Thanks for you having know. me on. I, yeah. I, uh, I missed you guys. I missed oh, you. Missed we you. missed you too. We missed you. Season five just came out like a month ago. And it sure did. again, we were so happy to see you back in it. Spoiler alert for everyone for season five of the last. Spoiler alert. Yeah. We are getting into it. Heston was back, made a cool entrance, and um, he made an exit. And we're going to be he talking a lot exit. about that. We're really, really excited to talk to you about that. But what have you been up to lately? Uh, nothing much. A couple of jobs I had lined up got either canceled or postponed so i haven't been doing much i've been done a lot i've done a lot of voice work and stuff and i did a pilot for a comedy show in norway so neat hence my hat because i have an re- epically bad haircut at the moment that's not bad that's not bad i look slick i mean it's like hipster on top and seven like a first grader going to school on the sides mm-hmm. it's like you know that's kind of what's in now though and i wore a cap yesterday so I, I don't know. Yeah. But I look cool with a beanie on as well. Yeah, you yeah. do. Yeah, you do. Yeah, that's for sure. That's for sure. Speak, <laughs> speaking of voiceover, though, too, before we get into Last Kingdom, um, one of the things you did say last time was yes. you were going to be in a video game. And you did. Wow. You were. You did a voiceover <laughs> in a little indie game called Assassin's well, Creed Valhalla. Yeah. Like a very little, very small indie game. Little, little game. Um, franchise, I think it's going to be, it might be a hit someday um you might know. be a hit might be a franchise who knows yeah hey, that was yeah 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 it was uh that was uh the highlight of my career as a gamer and an actor really? so, yeah wow awesome. yeah. well last time you're on the podcast we're like would you ever want to be in a video game or, or would you be in something like that and you, <laughs> and and already you knew <laughs> and you said word for word this is what you said and you looked at us <laughs> like that and then we're like okay We'll move on. <laughs> how hard was it holding that in at that at that time? Because you must have been so excited. We know how much you love video games and how much you love. And for people listening to, and- he was Thor. He was Thor in and Assassin's Halfdan. Creed. So and, uh, Earl Halfdan. Yeah, yes. uh, it was amazing. It was so good. It was. Um, I've done a couple of DLCs, you know, and they they really like the characters. And I I mean I must say I it was awesome to play Thor, right? I have slain giants and monsters. I am endlessly brave. I am adored by the masses from warrior to slave. God of war, God of yeah. thunder, God of awesomeness. But Earl Halfdan was a very, very good. I don't know if you played the game that far. We did. Because he's, oh, yeah, because he's way out in the game. I mean, I played like 120 hours before I got to him or something. Yeah, it was later, yeah. But, you know, I, I yeah. On my way to a mission. Ooh, what's that? Ooh, what's that? Ooh, what's of course. That? So that's so why much. it takes like hundred. It, it was hours. huge. It was a huge world. His little story and arc in the um, in the game is was is really well written, and it was such a pleasure to do. And uh, I've talked to the writer Darby McDevitt many oh. many times about this, and um, it, it was great. It was great. That's awesome. No, yeah, I loved um, downhill oh. from here, guys. No. <laughs> Not at all. My, my first, the first time I recognized you in the game was Thor, though, um, when you get to go to Asgard. So I thought that was pretty cool because I remember you you telling us, and we, I, I think at that point we knew you were in this game, but I yeah. didn't know where it was going to be. So that was pretty great. What was that like then, being Thor? What was that like? It was crazy. It was uh, for me. He turned out to be a little bit too shouty, uh, just mm-hmm. for my my own self critique when you're doing the original voice sometimes they don't know how far you are apart 
the mm. person you're talking to, right? Right. So I, I consistently ask, so how far am I, am I standing? Are we having a close conversation or am I on the other side of the river or whatever? And sometimes we got it wrong. And that's why he's a bit shouty sometimes, but, but the people seem to like it anyway. And uh, I oh. must say, I, I, when I went, uh, went down to the studio to do it, because I did it here in Norway, I didn't do the mocap. I put a, a Thor's hammer in my pocket just Good. to, you know, to have him with me. There you that's go. awesome. That's awesome. And it seems like it worked. So thanks, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Did you were you able to add anything like any of your own lines into it, or was it truly scripted? Oh no, 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 no. no there's no, there's no leeway for that. No, 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 no yeah. leeway at all. Okay. But but of course I was free to do whatever I wanted within that within that context within the within the frames of the dialogue. So so yeah. One of the one of the cool bits yeah. too was when uh, you get to have sort of like a a verbal sparring match. With Thor, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. like there's there's these moments in the game where you the can flighting start. with the, the with the the old father uh, on the other yes. side of the yeah ravine yeah 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 that was that was fun yeah it's really yeah. fun. I like the way they portrayed Thor in it too. Um, I thought it was like more accurate to what I've read. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, I mean, he is boasty. He's like yes. he's bigger than everything, and he yeah. So so yeah. Yeah. I just <laughs> I read a comment on one of the a video uh, on YouTube. It was like, "There's nothing godlike about this Thor." What? <laughs> like, come on, bro! <laughs> Cut me some slack. No, I read like I read um, Neil Gaiman's Norse mythology, which is a really cool yeah. interpretation. I think you said and Neil thought, Diamonds. Uh, Neil Gaiman, Gaiman, G A I M A N. Neil Diamond did one back before he wrote Sweet Caroline. <laughs> Yes. Um, but that didn't get a lot of press. Way back. So. No, no, no. Yeah. No press at all. No press. <laughs> Stick to music, bro. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I thought, like, the description, I was like, oh, this is like that description of, of Thor. And I'm sure that's a pretty popular one. Um, yeah, like Bolsty, like you said. But also, I, I kind of heard him as like a little shouty, I think, in when I read it. You know, not, not like they depict him in Marvel. Not like they depict him in other things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. A little less glamorous, I guess, I would say. Yeah, a little less shiny. shiny. <laughs> yeah. I think that's what the game was going for. They were trying to, like, they were definitely having, like, some Last Kingdom sort of vibes with this. As they far were. as, like, it made it feel, like, real grounded. Like, even the gods felt like they yeah, were, like, Yeah, yeah, and uh, I mean, they were, they're huge fans of the show as well. And they, they've they used uh, used it for referencing stuff. And, and uh, I mean, a lot of the actors are in it, so... Bjorn is in it. Uh, Harry Magnus, McIntyre. of course. Yep. Uh, I'm in it. Harry McIntyre is in it. Mark, in it. Mark's in it. We we love the game. You know, it was so cool to like play a game where you can go on raids and uh, explore what you know England before it was England. So it kind of almost felt like a, a Last Kingdom video game in some ways, which was it did. I mean, you know, uh, it, it on the on the internet it was after a while called uh, Assassin's Creed: The Last Kingdom version. So. That's cool. That's yeah, awesome. and I totally agree. It's and it's a great game. I mean, the story. I mean, Ub Ubisoft knows what they're doing. So. Totally, totally. Shifting gears a little bit to the Last Kingdom. Ooh, I know that show. Do you have you seen uh, the Last Kingdom? I've seen the Last Kingdom. Uh, okay. Yeah. Have you seen season five of the Last Kingdom? Yes, yet? you have. Okay. I saw it in one day, as I always do. Wow. What What'd you think? Uh, yeah. What'd you think? I love it. I, I mean, I love it. Yeah, they made me cry again. So mm -hmm. screw them, right? I think we cried in every episode except episode nine. <laughs> hey, think. wait hey, a just minute. <laughs> totally kidding. Totally. <laughs> um, yeah, let's let's just get let's, to it then. Let's I mean, get to it. Yeah, let's get to it. Heston does end up dying this, this season. That's and that's one thing we did talk about you last time. We, we asked about what you would want you asked us what we wanted we asked what the fans wanted what did you think about heston's death in season five last kingdom it took a king to kill him that's what yeah that's, what that's I, right you know it, it had right. to it, nobody could kill him but a true king that's my take on it what was your <laughs> what was your reaction when you uh found out that you were going to die I wasn't surprised because I've been waiting for it for six years. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> I was a bit surprised when I read the way it happened. Okay. Uh, that way it was going to happen. 
but I had to justify it uh, in my head. So I, f- I think it's a fitting end for him. <laughs> he's been bad all his life and he's trying to do good for one time. He's just once yeah. in his life, do the right thing and bleh. At least he's still lying. I love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah. At least he's still lying when he does the right thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know he's, what I mean? He's, he's, I, like, I mean, I, I've seen some people thinking that or saying that it's 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 not true to his character, but I think it is. I mean, I, I have to justify why he says and does what he does in that particular moment. And you know, it can be purely egotistic egotistical um reasons for him to say that because he knows that uh, if Uhtred takes Bebenberg he'll have some super trade going on yeah uh, in the north he will be maybe able to go up to Scotland and trade and also I think he knows I think he understands that he can say whatever he wants to say and it's it's a game of chance yeah if he gets out of there or not right and then just try to stick with the you know the 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 strongest part the strongest side like he's always done throughout his life uh right. he's always tried to see a bit of the future and who's going to be on who's going to be the strongest you know a year from now i'll go over there and you know like that of course yeah i think he hoped that it the lie would fly you know absolutely absolutely if, if, if you were to have written how heston would have died what would you have done? I I always said to the writers and the producers, I want him to have the most epic death ever, uh, like being torn into four pieces by four horses, or or at this point in time, he's it's like he's older, he's sick of war, he knows that yeah. he's he's loving the trade business because he's finally getting what he's always wanted, you know lots of silver and right. be rich and but before that i would have loved if he died in like a domestic accident or something like <laughs> slip on <laughs> slip on uh some horse shit and hit his head on an anvil or something that would, that would be awesome. <laughs> that was just one scene in the last kingdom <laughs> like the whole storyline is going on over here we cut to heston we're like yes that's the back like, oh he died yeah because i mean people had to have died in domestic accidents you know back then as well and everybody you know, dies here by the sword or the axe or fire or drowning or whatever but nobody you know slips on something and you know <laughs> i know <laughs> that would be funny. but that would be a more fun thing totally i would love for him not to have died you know yeah I, I had a part of me was like, I, I wouldn't mind if Heston just lived on in the last King world. Obviously, I think I don't know when you guys found out there was going to be a movie coming. But, you know, obviously, a lot of people going to this thinking this is going to be the last time we see these characters. And I also had a piece of me that was like, I, I hope he doesn't die. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it was but still I mean, I mean, it was sad, but it was also kind of uh, a bit liberating. Yeah, I don't know, because then I could, you know remove last kingdom from me and just move on personally okay gotcha kind of. what was it like then that last day you were on set and i don't know if that was your last day on set but was that emotional for you it was very emotional it was and it's i've i've done a couple of death scenes before but it's always been very um like in dead snow i, I get my head torn apart and like torn in two and stuff like that but i wanted the audience to feel sad you know i was sad i was definitely because sad. that would that would make them what you know mm-hmm. conflicted within them so, why am i sad heston has always been a cunt now he's dead i should be happy but <laughs> why am i crying you know i, know. I wanted I know. that reaction and it seems like i i got it but but i was very happy i was very happy to hear that it was John East that was going to do my uh, yeah. my death because not that I don't think any uh, any other director would have done it you know seriously or, or be, but I knew what he would he would we wouldn't be rushing that day. We wouldn't be shit. We got we light is slipping. We gotta go. You right. know, and we were going to do it because we did the whole Elfwin thing and and the um, Ethelhelm scene. And we were going to do the death on the same day. 
but then we only had three hours left. And then John just said, no, we're not, we, we can't do this in three hours. We have to have, so we did it. We got an extra day just to do the death. And it was, oh, that's great. It was really nice. So yeah. That's, that's cool. He's dead now. Uh, he's huh? dead. I know. <laughs> we're still not over it. No, I'm not sure how I want him to go. I mean, I definitely wanted some sort of Uhtred connection there since he was the one who like got you out of that that slavery sort of position that Heston was in when when we first see him and Uhtred together. So, I mean, that was definitely a nod to Uhtred right there, right? Yeah. I don't know, though, because like it was still just. I don't like he wasn't around Uhtred when it happened, you know, so but but he still did it and it still like helped for Ben Burr. And and before that scene, too, you even bring up um, like Eric to yeah. uh, Elfwin, cool. uh, which was pretty sweet, like a nice season two callback. Uh, I just shouldn't have said my name was Heston. That's, uh, you know, yeah. like, why? Heston? No. <laughs> I'm Bob. I'm Bob. Oh, I'm Bob. I'm just Bob. <laughs> I'm Bob. I was Eric's intern. Uh, <laughs> I was Eric's like, intern. I was his summer intern. job, but he died. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah no i agree but it feels good i mean there was one comment on reddit that's really stuck to me and that is what well, somebody wrote the most underrated friendship in the whole show is the friendship between utrid and heston mm. Mm. and i agree it's because deep. they have this i mean we talked about it earlier or in the, in the last one about how they complete each other, how they build each other's reputation, you know, exactly. In season five, so much time has passed and Heston is not a threat anymore. He doesn't want to be a threat anymore. Right. And Uhtred sees that. And I think, you know, the connection they have in season five is really good. It's really good. I like it. The, yeah. the scene when we go to see Alice in the, yeah, so in the cabin. Yeah. Yeah. When we're out on the porch after we've been inside. Yes. I love doing that scene. I loved it because I thought it was perfect. Yes. Yeah. 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 It was more respect between them. The, the respect still stayed, but it was it kind of shifted a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love doing that scene. And, and yeah. for people uh watching, listening, we're talking about when Uhtred leaves and Heston's basically asking for some money from Uhtred for his service. And yeah. it was like more money. <laughs> we both know you already took some from the wagon and you're like yeah i did you yeah, just like you know me bro <laughs> they both like chuckle a little bit like that was yeah. i think we gave that like a bro moment nominee or something oh yeah in yeah. our, in our uh, episode that. recap because we we love that moment that yeah it was a great I, moment think about their history together yeah and the fact that he says you know the last line he has in that nobody really nobody ever really changes or something like that yeah yeah exactly yeah. So there's the the banter has become more friendly. And, uh, you know, I think if Heston hadn't died, I think they could become, you know, more friendly, not friends, but more friendly. Yeah. There's always been sort of this friendly animosity between them, yeah. like sort of a like, Hey, how you doing? Fuck you. Fuck you. Yeah. All right, have a good you know, I'll just hang you upside down in a tree for a while. Get out of this. That's what I was gonna yeah. say. I'll see you later. Yeah. I mean, but, we talked about it. I, I think when he hung him up the tree, I think he knew that they would escape, but it didn't matter. Yeah. Do you think when you meet him in Rum Covo, when you go to see him in this season, is that the first time Heston and Nutrit have seen each other since the hanging upside down? Thing? Yeah, yeah, or, yeah. Because you if think you so? can see, if you look at Fennon in that scene, Oh, he's got what he's hope. carrying and yeah. we came up with that idea on the day i was yeah. like i don't remember who it was but like hey mark why don't you grab a rope and tie a noose while you're talking to just give a little throwback to the last time we met exactly well, yeah fucking hell mate we'll do that <laughs> so, he, <laughs> so yeah he's he's got his rope and he's like branding the rope like yeah. remember what we did you did last time we met stuff i, I love that I love and i that. love how you know everybody's kind of gotten over it a little bit though like they're not immediately grabbing you because look it was just business it was, it was just, just business it was just business everybody understands <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah we were different factions you know we know exactly so, yeah. and and 
speaking of that scene too, you know, that's the first episode. I think it's episode five that you come in, right? And you have a nice classic Uhtred Heston shit talk. Like, yo, Uhtred, this is nice, but like I have one but twice as big as you. see my place. 30 ships. 30 ships. 30 ships. <laughs> double, double the size. Twice the size of this thing. This is dirty. And yeah, I love it. I love it. I love yeah. it. The banter is still there. It's awesome. It's classic. And then it's like, you know, it gets serious all of a sudden. And that, that's just cool to see. Your relationships just seems just as natural as it's always been. Mm-hmm. Um, and as, a, as two Last Kingdom fans who love those little aspects of the show, it was just so awesome to have that in season five. Great. I thought. You know, yeah. yeah we felt so too yeah it was cool in my mind in in the years between season four and season five here heston left winchester he enrolled in a business program in a business you remember got his master and then became yeah. uh, a master businessman and, and, and if you remember when he left winchester he had a bag full of silver and gold which he had stolen from siggy right oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. You know, was you the, need uh, some capital to uh, start up your business, right? There it yeah. is. So, H- yeah. Heston was a lot more mellow this season. They kept referencing like that he's not picking up a sword now and, and stuff. What what was his change? Do you know like what happened to his character? Why he was like this now? I just think, you know, people change. I mean, when you get older, things that were important to you when you were 20 are not important anymore. Yeah. And you have to secure your future. I mean, I think people thought the same like we think now. Mm. You have to secure your, if you're suddenly 50 and you don't have anything, then you should get going, start, you know, build your future. Right, right. I think that's what he did. And I think he was just tired of, tired of war, you know, yeah. and always <laughs> tired of losing, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we we all know people who wanted to excel in in a certain a certain you know business or whatever, and and they th- thought they could, but they couldn't. Mm-hmm. Things always just backfired or whatever. And mm-hmm. uh, he he's smart enough to see that that uh, if he wants to, his end goal is to be rich. Then hey, he's trading doing well, he's yeah, doing well. Yeah. And you go to Linda's farm, right? That's where you're trading at Linda's farm, right? And, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. you know, kind hanging of out with the nuns. Yes. Not a bad yeah. place for Heston to be. <laughs> it's <laughs> correct. He's not a dumb guy. <laughs> That's what he's doing. <laughs> That's funny. Um, you had, you had a great uh, sort of team up partnership with Hild this yeah, season. Oh, that was great. Which I don't think any of us saw coming. And that's, that's the weirdest not, not weird for me, but that that was, I think, for Heston, that would be the, do I have to partner up with a nun? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What is that? Like in season three, <laughs> in season three, ep four, he says, I have no, I have no need for a nun. Right. Remember? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. One of our favorites. But now he does. Now <laughs> he does. Really, <laughs> it's just really nice. It's cool. And being, and also being with Eve, it was, uh, Having a couple scenes with her was amazing. So yeah, cool. it's great. Yeah, we were looking at that like oh, two like Last Kingdom nostalgic legends coming on and doing this important point uh, piece of the mission, which which was so cool. Like we we in our episode talk, we kind of call it like it's like a Bebember heist, you know? Yeah, it is. You know, and we wanted like yeah, a yeah. heist montage. Like, you know, do you remember? And have you seen Rick and Morty? Um, oh yeah, yeah, the newest season. Yep. Where they go to the heist con. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all the montages. <laughs> How yeah, yeah, funny yeah. would that have been? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <That'd> be <great. laughs> yeah, no, that was amazing. Um, that was a good day at the beach for sure. Cool. Well, yeah. Did you ever think back starting the show season two? I mean, I know you said you were waiting to die for six years. Did you ever in your wildest imagination think that your character would be a, a fairly you know major part in retaking Bevenberg? No, 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 no. Was... rather the opposite yeah. yeah you know being hired by Whitgar or something to defend Bebenberg against Uhtred yeah I never saw it going this way I would love it I thought many times it would be fun to hang out with the the boy band yeah you know as opposites 
but still having to work together to for a, for a common goal, you know, that right. would be cool. But I never saw it. I never pictured it this way. No, I didn't either. And I thought it was no. kind of a cool little little twist in the Last Kingdom that Heston's yeah, actually so helping. Too. Not yeah. necessarily. Well, he does want Uther to take Bevenbur at this point because of his own self interest, which I think is very fitting. You know, circumstances. Yeah. You know, ten years before this, it, the circumstances wouldn't have been the same. Nope. Where, you know, it's just kind of the way things worked out. Yeah. So I, I loved it. I loved it. Loved every second of this. Um, even though, of course, I would have been, would have wanted to be in all the episodes and whatnot. But, of course. you know, it is what it is. And I think we did the best out of what we had. So, yeah. Well, in season five, when you pick up the necklace, because, I, you know, we knew you were in it and we were just like, when is he coming? When are we mm-hmm. getting Heston? Uh, we were pretty pumped. And uh, we, we filmed our reactions, which we'll release eventually. Um, so I got to go back and see. I know I was super excited when when we saw you on screen. Nice. Was there was there any sort of plan when they did say we're going to bring you back in? Like what what sort of the reveal they wanted going for and how they wanted that scene to sort of reveal Heston for the first time? Yeah, I mean, it was a, just a classic. Who is this guy? And then what is this? And then, whoa, it's him. So, but, uh, yeah, no, I don't I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Gotcha. I don't know, Steve. Jeez. Steve, why are you asking these Ask questions, yeah. bro? Questions at what seven o'clock heck, in the morning. Dude. What the heck? <laughs> Good question, though. Good questions. <laughs> Speaking of when we first see you, you got the new haircut. Yes. Right? Which was, you know, we got the shave sides. We got the um, sort of, was it braided in the back yeah like a ponytail with a braid on top of it so yeah yeah, yeah. silver beads and stuff makeup department costume department and me have all for the past three seasons called heston for blinkston blinkston, blinkston. he loves his bling yeah he does so he has new rings and he has new armor and with the and the, yeah he loves his bling same necklace though yeah 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 of Maybe course that's, that's uh that's super awesome. true uh, that's that's heston for me that uh that thor's hammer that's i love awesome. that scene too just because you walk in and you realize like oh crap that's that's the queen up there we we've got to hide this stuff or it's going to start a war Shit might... is gonna hit the fan yeah and i'm not gonna be able to trade you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> I go, I gotta go tell utrid <laughs> yeah well we, we talk about that how like you know utrid is like not screwed up really <laughs> up until this point i mean he's always come through and this season finally like edward and i guess you know heston a little bit there going straight to utrid they've all like wisened up and when there's a mm-hmm. problem they're just like get utrid <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah, yeah we know now you know <laughs> that he's the solution to all our problems yeah and he has been for many many years yeah. but we, nobody has ever seen it <laughs> It's the last season. It's you know, the last season. There it's the last season. Let them all just, you know, understand that this is happening now. Yeah. <laughs> we thought you had a pretty cool, the first costume that we saw you in, you know, definitely pretty extravagant. You know, Heston's this Lord. Did you have any input into that costume? I wanted them to attach the, the Thor's hammer. Yeah. And I wanted to keep one of my <laughs> bracers, the one with the horse rune on it, but they didn't want to, I don't know why it happened, but, uh, but yeah, I, I think I look pretty cool. The thing cool. is that, <laughs> the thing is that I've seen a lot of comments uh, that people thinking that I've, I've uh, lost a lot of weight and stuff uh, before that season. And I did. Wow. I actually lost 16 kilos before this season. Wow. Nice. So, nice. but the thing is that, <laughs> the thing is that I think the producers, because he, he, I still look really bulky, right? With the fur and the big yeah, the yeah. cloak and the I think they just wanted me to look still look a bit, you know, heavy set. Okay. <laughs> so that people would recognize me. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Really, yeah, Nigel, I lost 16 kilos. Oh, you did what? Hit yeah. him furs and stuff. <laughs> I don't know. Fluff him up. Fluff him up. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Cool. Now there's another scene too. And we talk about how Heston's not really wielding a sword anymore, but um, later on Adrian Schiller and you have a, a really cool moment where he's sort of like, Hey, Heston, remember me when you locked me in that room forever. And now mm-hmm. I have you here. He sort of corners you mm-hmm. and then they cut. And I, I assume he was just locking you in the, in the hall there. Yeah. Yeah. And you can yeah. see the two yeah. guards just. Yeah. And then like, 
when they cut back, like they're gone and you're by yourself. Oh, no, that's right. I'm sorry. That's all come back. Uh, now. you pay them off. That's right. Yes, I pay them off. Colby. Paid them off. Come on, Colby. What come on, heck? Colby. OK, it's past eight o'clock now. You should be away. <laughs> that's right. You pay them off. I pay them off. Yeah. And I tell them that they will get more money on my next uh, the next time I come around. See, that's where I thought you were going to die. Mm hmm. That's where I thought you were going to die. Did you oh. think I was going to die this season? I was thinking just because you were, you had made it so late into uh, the season, I was thinking we might get him in the movie uh, is what ah, I was thinking. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. And if you look, we did a, a little movie announcement when it came out and we you we had you on the thumbnail kind of like trying right. to bait, you know, maybe uh, maybe Heston's in. <laughs> Movie trying to influence the producers and the yeah, writers. Look, look at that! Look at that! Look. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. mean, you had Leofrich, uh, you know, show up in in uh, Uhtred's head. Why not Heston? Not impossible, right? <laughs> not impossible. Yeah. That would be nice. Yeah. But alas, what about your death scene too? What was yes. I like the film because Constantine just stabs you through and just walks away to get some wine. I mean, he and... does a crazy stab too, like thrust He's that like thing and. One and uh, again and, and again he really yeah. gets in there on the second thrust yeah it's uh it was uh it was a very special day for me it wasn't my it wasn't the last day of shooting last day of shooting was the dialogue uh, the conversation i had with Uhtred in my uh in my office mm. in the church in lindisfarne i i talked with with uh Einstein a lot about this because uh, on the days before because i was I really wanted to do it, to do it well. And I wanted, as I told you earlier, I wanted, you know, to, to make a shift in, in the audience there. Yeah. But also I, I had an idea first, when you're in big trouble, you kind of revert to your own reflexes, you know? Mm. So I wanted, what I really wanted was to get stabbed and then just try to walk away with the sword and, in just, to, to escape the situation, you know, because of the reflex, ah. because that's what he's been doing for his whole life. Just, okay, get out of there. Right. Uh, and I tried it and I didn't feel like I made it work the way I wanted it. So it was, we reverted to what we got now, which is, which is nice. But I had to, I remember before we did the stabbing thing, I had to just take a moment. I just came up, can I just get one minute by this bonfire right here? And so like, 50 people just stood there and waited respectfully. It was, it was, a, it was an amazing. And I mean, it's always like this when, when principal characters die, that's been in the show for a long time. Yeah. And I know the crew and I, they know me and I know yeah. it's like when, when everybody dies in, in shows like this, it's a sad day. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but luckily I, I I just stared in I yeah, I just stared into the bonfire for a minute, just thinking about everything and just okay, let's do it. Cool. And we did it cool. twice. And uh, yeah. You it did was it twice. a strange okay. day. Okay. It was yeah. a strange day. It's gotta be weird. You weren't working on and the it's show. so weird when you when you're trying to get in the in the mindset of thing and you have to stand there for 20 minutes while they, you know, attach yeah. the sword to you. <laughs> like, okay. and they're messing it up a little bit and like, yeah, yeah. Talking about, like yeah come on let's go <laughs> stay in okay put on some music put on some gojira just yeah okay forget everything right yeah. so that wasn't a real sword that was in you then you did that they didn't actually do the real thrust yeah but we <laughs> thought you would do the real no thing, no no man. this this was we this <laughs> were this was for the for the close-up Oh, for, for the the master, it's a real sword. Yeah, yeah. The original, they actually thrust the real sword through. Yeah, there's the yes. Constantine's real sword was. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. Good. Because yeah. <laughs> otherwise, so we would be like, uh, I've survived the uh, stabbing uh, through the heart with the sword. That's awesome. I'm, uh, I'm awesome like that. Oh uh, yeah, of course. The question that we discuss, and, and Uhtred says it, I think, in the next episode, is that like Heston will finally get to Valhalla uh, something mm -hmm. like that mm -hmm. and we were talking about it like he didn't have a sword in hand but he had a sword in chest so is that does that count yeah for the Valhalla rules are there technicalities here thing is that I grab the sword you do when I'm on my way down nice there we go that's what I said in our talk I was like I think when I'm on when I'm on my knees I grab it and then fall over that's what I guess <laughs> 
Okay. Perfect. Okay. I don't remember if he can see it. But we were discussing that. Like, did he grab it on the way down? Um, so that's awesome to hear that you did. Uh, staying true to the last kingdom nature of grabbing the sword. And we didn't, we didn't want him to show up to Valhalla at the door and the receptionist to be like, Nope. Do you have you your didn't proof? Grab the sword. Do you have your proof of sword in hand? Uh, no. <laughs> oh, it was Did, in my chest. Do I have to? I, oh, Nobody so told sorry. me about this. <laughs> I'm so, we really need it. I got a killed fault. by a king. <laughs> Let me talk to my manager. Let's see if there's anything we can do. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. But it, it is yeah. nice to know that Heston is gone, at least in his own mind and Uhtred's mind, to Valhalla. Yeah. That, that's cool to know. It's great to it's great to know, and it's also kind of a throwback. Well, not really, but kind of to the first time they meet each other. He says, "Is it Valhalla you want?" Uhtred asks him, and Heston says, "In time, freedom would be my first choice." Yes, yes. You know? yeah. So he's always wanted to go to Valhalla, and now he does. Yeah, and he and... stayed free for many years before. So he got his. I mean. He lived his best life, I think. I think he had a great outing, you know. He got to do plenty of cool Dane stuff. He caused some havoc. And like you said, in the end, he gets killed by a king in Bevenber. I mean, that's... I don't, I don't know I what mean, else he could want. <laughs> exactly. There's just one thing. One thing. Through four seasons, I never once got to shout Shield Wall. Oh. Not once. You should and that have... bugs me. That oh, bugs man. me. That I think they need to make a spin-off series of Heston where I can just shout shield wall all the time just mm -hmm. to make up for it. I'm 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 down with that. We need I'm that. I'm down with that. That'd be great at your death <laughs> scene there. They had the sword to your chest and you just threw a Hail Mary and yelled shield wall to see what would happen. <laughs> <laughs> shield wall! Nobody shield comes. Wall! Anyone? Anyone? <laughs> shield wall! A bit late, but okay. Oh. There weren't a lot of shield wall calls this season. Again, I, it seems the show after season three has sort of sort of moved away from the shield wall focus. We've heard from a couple of people that that was sort of intentional because they didn't want it to be overdone. We were definitely hoping for a major shield wall. A major shield wall. The shield wall. Yeah. I want another I, three tier shield wall coming in. I want that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you it. know what I think? I think that, you know, the, the whole shield wall tactic, the Norsemen brought that over to England. And at this point, everybody knows it. Yeah. So it's not that big of a commotion every time somebody does a shield wall. It's just, it's what you do now. Yeah, I guess know, that makes 30 sense. 30 years later, because now everybody does it. So yeah. maybe that has something to do with it. At the outside of Banfield in season three, though, when you have Uhtred's gang surrounded, and you don't you don't yell shield wall, but you do say like you'll yell, you will die on your knees. And then yeah, like yeah, even yeah, the yeah. horse like winnings then, like he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, like the horse is like in on it, you know. He's like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, and we did the close up and that that annoys the hell out of me and has done it for years. Cause when we did the close up, when I shout that line, my horse goes up on two legs, on his hind legs, and I stand there with and it was I just felt so awesome. And uh, they couldn't use it because it was the close-up. Oh, no. Because the horse just, you know, it blurred out. Like, no, come on. It was my hero moment. That would have oh, been amazing. Man. It's still amazing. It's still amazing what we got, but geez, oh, man. But now it's in my head, though. I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. I have a um, picture like a Heston statue like that with the horse up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Knees, man. Uh, you die on your knees. No, I, that would have been great if, if Heston had a chance to yell, yell shield wall. And, you know, another thing, too, I liked Heston way better at the end of the show than I liked him in the books. I mean, I loved Heston in the show, but in the books, I didn't really like Heston at all by the end of his his arc. I um, think I, but I think that's that was Bernard Cornwell's, you know, mm -hmm. uh, he wanted that. Yeah, but I love that a lot of characters got their redemption. Totally. Over the past two seasons. I mean, you guys seem to love it, and and all the fans seem to love it. So yeah, yeah. I think so we, the, love it. we we were super happy with the last season. We were nervous going into it because, yeah, yeah, yeah. well, you know, what we, do you think we were, dude? Sure, <laughs> of course. Like, will they like it? Because this is your baby. This is your baby. Yeah. We both talk about though. We're we're huge yeah. fans of like Star Wars. Uh, we yeah. loved Game of Thrones up until the last season. So I mean, like. The sequel trilogy left a bad taste in our mouth. It, For you Star know, Wars, yeah. The season eight of Game of Thrones. So we were like, come on, come on, guys. Don't 
don't do it to us you know um, yeah, don't uh, don't rush it don't do anything yeah so the whole time i was i was just a little skeptical and like when people's like i think it was like episode two or three on i mean a character dies every single episode and i was like oh my god what are they gonna it's do just falling like flies yes i know <laughs> but i, I to I know. you know i i loved it i was so satisfied and I, I like I, I got emotional so many times this season and I like it even more on my second watch through now that ang- that anxiety is gone of are they going to kill it like now I just enjoy it I'm just like yes this is great yeah it's yeah. great yeah I love it it looks like everybody loves it because we're now you know the most viewed show in March yeah. on all it, yeah it's it's crazy but I think you know what I think helped do that was the fact of course there's the movie coming out yeah but we ended the story on a high note yeah it was no we didn't drag it out for three more seasons yeah you know talking about oh here uh, again the bed and Burr thing or, or or the edward won't listen or whatever you know we just end it on a high note everything is set yeah. and, and everybody's happy with that you know, totally. I think one of the reasons as much as I like would love if a new last kingdom season came out forever, you know, because it's our favorite show. I yeah. think some things are just better. Most things, I think if you just stop it and you end the, the arc, you have the yeah. full circle and then it's always there like that. Breaking Bad is one of my other favorite shows. And that did that five seasons. They, they ended it. And I always say, I think that was, that was the right thing to do. It's yeah. a smart move, I think, because yeah. a lot of other shows, they're just too too big focus on, on uh, you know, business and the money aspect mm-hmm. of it instead of the storytelling aspect of it. Right. You know, we have to drain the swamp. We have to, you know, get all the, we have to, you know, keep the viewers for three more years, even though we don't have any more stories to tell, but yeah. we'll get yeah. their money. Right. So, but, but we didn't care about that. We just wanted to tell good stories and yeah and end it on a high note which uh which i think we did totally yeah. did we were super I'm satisfied super proud of being a part of this i mean it's uh yeah and it's weird because it's been like for me it's now six years of my life you yeah, know? yeah six years is a long time it is it is it's been a wonderful wonderful time and it's awesome to see it starting to get more recognition so i mean we've been saying for years now this show deserves to be talked about amongst Game of Thrones. I mean, it yeah. should be that big. It, and I, when I when I try to sell people on watching the show, I always say, "Do you like Game of Thrones?" Even though it's not fantasy. Yeah, yeah, but um, yeah, yeah. But but like, oh, if you like Game of Thrones, you'll love Last Kingdom, um, yeah, or something so. like that. Do you like Vikings? Oh, if you like Vikings, you're gonna love Last Kingdom. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I've never really had people come back to me when I've recommended it, saying like, "Oh, I didn't really get into it." I, everyone watches it. They get into it and. They love it. And they so, love it. You know, I know um, a basketball player um, just shout out the Last Kingdom. Yeah, from that, the from the Bucks. The, the Bucks, yeah, which is kind of cool they, for Aston because I think he grew up. Aston is a super fan of the Bucks, so yeah. You know, and that's cool to see the Lad Bible just, uh, you know, that huge post. That's that is huge for the show to get that kind of press. It's so cool. I know, I know, I know. I can definitely see, like, in a few more years, uh, the show getting even more traction. People asking for more from it. Um, mm. I can definitely see that happening now, the way it's going. Yeah, yeah and I, th- I think uh, some people have said, well, <laughs> but it's too late now. They should have, no, no, no. Late recognition is better than no recognition, you know? 100%. Yeah. 100%. I, 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 if, this, if this show, these five seasons can live on for 20 years, I'm yeah. super happy with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And season yeah. five so far is aging pretty well for us. Um, Because, you know, we've gone and rewatched it a couple of times for me now, uh, actually, because, you know, we're getting ready for these talks and I have it on right now. It's it's always on, (laughs) you know, in the background. And I think I think we like it more every time we watch it so far. Uh, Do I speak for you with that, Steve? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Rewatch it then, because I liked it the first time. Maybe I'll love it second time. I know for me, like uh, season three now is probably and again, I don't know after watching this, it's going to take time, I think. But season three, when I first saw season three, it was probably my least favorite at the time, just because it was so dark. And it was just like, we just got we just killed Ragnar. We just killed Turo. We just got her back. 
uh, Alfred dies, Harry McIntyre leaves. But like going back now, like all those moments like made something and built on something. And it was, and now it's probably my favorite season. I think it's my um, favorite. I think right now we'll see what season five, you know, you ask me in a year. Um, yeah, we'll see. I mean, but for me, season three is, is, is also, or at least for Heston, it's the best one. I think. Yeah. <laughs> Cause he gets to, you know, show off his thousand men and yeah. his arrow bow and arrow skills and get scared. He gets scared. He, Sort of square. blood hair in the square. Oh man! By the way, we joke. It was um, a good season. They they actually showed in episode two the construction of the square. Let's see. We, yeah, we yeah. kind of nerd out about that, which is yeah. Kind of <laughs> Make the square. You know, looking back now on your time on, on the show, your six years, are there any moments in that time period, you know, whether shooting or on set, that really stay with you? Um, that come to your head oh yeah for sure i mean both on and off set you know i will never forget the whole um <laughs> bestiality thing yes. oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But, uh, <laughs> that that will be with me forever a lot of small moments and and i think just the whole vibe yeah, a lot of so lot many. of stuff a lot of stuff but the, as a whole as well it will always be very deep in my heart and i don't know it might be this might be the highlight of my career who knows right so i have to you know who knows right good could, could well be and i mean it's hard to be number one it's hard to get to number one and, mm -hmm. but we did and did. i'm not sure if i'm ever, ever going to be in something that becomes number one again who knows yeah this is very very dear to me uh, yeah yeah were you able? <laughs> I know. Okay, Colby, Colby, <laughs> you made Yepa cry again. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Were you able to like take any sort of souvenirs from set? Oh, yeah. Allowed to say? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Because. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. Or for instance, please be these beauties. Open. Very nice. Oh, nice. The beard yeah. tusks. Do you wear those on special occasions still? Oh, yeah. Every day. Okay. Every day is a special occasion. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I mean, wearing these makes everything a special occasion, basically. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. And I also have other stuff. Yeah. I also have other stuff. Awesome. I always, I always I said it from the, from the very first day that. When I leave this show, I'm I have to bring something. Yeah. So That's from cool. season four, I have one of the coins with uh, Toby Regbo on it. Oh really? Nice. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> and I have some of my beads that were in my hair for season five. I have the tusks from season three and four. People keep telling me to invest in Toby coin, and it, it yeah. sounds like you're already, you've already yeah. got some investment. Toby in Toby coins. Coin. <laughs> It's going to be better than dog coins. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> going back to like when you first started shooting The Last Kingdom, how have you seen like the production on set change to season five? Did it grow or did it kind of stay the same? I don't know. It kind of stayed the same. I mean, it's a big production, but we were also, I mean, the crew and the cast and everyone is so bonded that it just yeah. feels like a small thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Kind of. Because it's really, really big, but it yeah. just feels small when you're there, like okay. intimate and nice. <laughs> gotcha. So no, I don't think I don't think I've seen it. Uh, of course, from season two to season three, there was a big shift. Right. Uh, when Netflix completely take, took over. Right. Uh, but from three, four, five, no, not really. I gotcha. Don't yeah. And what uh, am I? What have the other guy people said? Have they said they saw a big change? I haven't asked anybody else that yet oh. um, Don't because ask a lot of the people we've talked to, we Take made a my point. Word for it. <laughs> we try to make a point this go around right after the season come out to try to get some of the new people that we haven't talked to like right away, like um, and the new characters. Um, so I think we had Harry Gilby two days after it came out and we had Rod Hallett and um, oh, Rod. Harry yeah, they're so good. Both of those guys. I mean, yeah. Apple what was it like to work with, um, with Rod? He's an asshole. He's a murderer. I know. What the heck? 
you know, it was, he's an amazing guy, fantastic human being. And, uh, what, a, what a character, huh? Constantine. Yeah. Jesus it was Christ, cool to have a character. Him. He feels like a classic last kingdom character coming in. So, you know? yeah, we talked about this and, uh, even though I, I, every time I talk to him, I say, I start off with, hello, murderer. <laughs> uh, you know, yeah. we have a great, yeah, it, it's, yeah, it's great. Yeah. Was there, was there anything you asked from him from, for your, your death scene? Was there anything like, could you do this for me? Is there, was no, there anything? no. But he asked if he was, if there was anything he could do for me, uh-huh. which is really, really nice, yeah. which is the way it should be. Right. Always. When you're doing scenes, I don't know if we've talked about this before, but if I'm just standing there thinking about my shit and the other guy or girl is standing and just thinking about their shit, yeah, then yeah. this is not going to happen. Yeah. But if I try to make you look good and you try to make me look good, we'll look good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? No, he was he was really generous and asking, "Are you sure? Or anything? I can. Do you want me to look you in the eye? Do you want me to look you? Do you want me to say something? Do you want?" To, I was like, "Dude, just stab me. That that'll suffice." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's enough, Rod. Stab just me and just and leave me. me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's funny. And and another character this season who had a huge sort of change in character. I mean. He kind of just went up, transcended another level, turned into a Sith Lord, as we say, was Ethelhelm. You, it's so funny that you say that mm-hmm. because when we did the, the 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 one scene that we had together by the bonfire, when he just shows up and stuff, we talked about we were two Sith Lords talking. Yeah, yeah. we felt like two Sith Lords. Yeah, yeah. Well, you yeah. definitely are. <laughs> You definitely so, are. yeah, yep. but yeah, man, Jesus, Ethel, he really goes through a, an emotional roller coaster this season. I know. Yeah. Wow. So that, that was another amazing performance. We didn't expect him to, uh, that character to be such a, to basically be the main bad guy, mm-hmm. um, you know, the whole season. Uh, mm-hmm. So it's kind of a, a cool transition for his character. And then you have that great scene with him and um, he's like already shifted to that like Sith Lord mode and um, you know, what was it like working with Adrian Schiller there for that, that scene? It was amazing. Yeah. It was great. I mean, yeah, it just felt really, really right. It mm-hmm. felt exactly like it was supposed, like two, two villains coming together and one is more villainous than the other and the pressure is in there, they're butting heads and, and you can see, I think you can see, I tried to show that Heston understands that if he stays in this conversation any longer, he'll die. So uh, I'll mm-hmm. just remove myself now. Right. And then he's trapped. So, yeah, it was a great scene. It was great. Yeah, cool. Adrian is great. Yeah. Now, watching the show as a fan, did you have any um, sort of favorite new characters in season five that you really like to watch? I really like Ethelstan. Yeah, I do too. I don't, I don't want to, you know, yeah, I don't no, want to not mention anyone. Exactly. They're all so good. Everybody does a great job. Mm-hmm. But Harry Gilby was, uh, it's really good. Yeah. Yeah, we and thought a lot of the new characters were so good yeah. this season. A lot of, introducing a lot of really cool characters in the last moments of The Last Kingdom here. Obviously, oh, and, and those all, are going to go on. And Mickey as uh, uh, Ron Walder. Jesus we, Christ. We just had him on. He was our last guest, too. Oh, really? Yes. Nice, yes. nice, nice. He's such a sweet guy. Mm-hmm. So, so opposite from Ron Walder. And uh, what a casting job, huh? Oh, I yeah. mean, I've seen photos where I didn't know if it was Ace or Mickey. Really? I have no... Is the, I had to ask them because we have a chat. A WhatsApp chat. I was like, "This picture. Who is this? Who is this? Is oh this you, Ace, or is this you, Mickey?" Yeah. yeah, that was awesome too. And we we told um, Mickey when we talked to him, like, I kind of had to I had to look up when I first saw you to make sure you weren't like his cousin or brother or something because that's how close I thought you guys looked like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same with Me Elfwin too. and uh, Millie Brady. I thought was a great yeah, yeah. casting choice. Yeah, like, absolutely, totally could see uh, it. Stiora. Perry, yeah, Bama, so. you know, you know, casting is superb, has been Absolutely. superb on this show. 
yeah to be honest. I, would, I would even say the the kid ethel stand to ethel stand was was pretty good too i mean Super. probably not as hard to do that with a younger kid but still i thought it was good yeah and also i mean young utrid in ep one of season one yeah. he's amazing yeah. as well yeah i don't think there has been like any bad casting choices totally and king edward too in uh season one at the marshes you know yeah, yeah. great job with timothy innes coming yeah, in the little baby the, mar- the baby in the marshes just he, fantastic yeah so you now you know he's only 12 years old oh, yes yeah. he's only 12 years old yeah. he's so got a mean 12 year old beard. amazing you know and he grew his own beard and stuff yeah. it's crazy that was another great character change we thought in season um five we thought we expected that sort of from him in season four to be like more alfred like and and obviously he was pretty inept in season four and then season Mm -hmm. five was like the edward we had wanted he's a true king now and he makes some decisions that are i was like what the fuck yes you know the elderman thing and stuff yeah i know i love that though i was like what because i told you guys i told you guys on a previous when i was here before that i don't read episodes that i'm not in yeah right so right. i haven't read one three one two three four six seven eight or ten so yeah. uh for me everything was a surprise and uh it was great that's cool you got to watch the finale obviously you knew more than we did i knew i finale. knew what was going to happen of course but right i didn't I think know we all, the particulars i think we all knew a little bit that Uhtred would someday take Bevember back. I mean, even if you hadn't read the books, that was just, but then when they, they throw us that, they try to throw us off with it burning down. And we thought they were going to do a message like Bevember is always in his heart. Bevember has been in your heart all, yeah, all the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. And we were going to be really mad. Oh, <laughs> we were right. going to be like, yeah. no, no. Cause they were just killing everyone off. And that's why I was just like, are they about to just season eight me of game of Thrones? So, so I was <laughs> I like, been even then that. I was like, he just killed Wittgar. That was great. Yeah, let's let's put that fire out. And and I love how it happens because it's almost like the gods have come in. Was that yeah, yeah, Thor? Yeah. Was that Yepathor yeah. bringing that down Thor? the rain? Yes, see? I can see it. <laughs> I can see Yepathor. No, I think I, I I that that's a beautiful beautiful moment with Alex sitting there and just Fuck, I did it, and the gods are with me, and you know yes. we don't do a lot of. Or we don't do any, you know, uh, like in Vikings, you know, Odin shows oh, yeah. up, you know, no, we don't do anything like that. But, and, you know, the timings is just perfect for the, for the rain to start pouring. And, and, but they take, he takes it as a sign from the gods and it's beautiful. It's beautiful. That's what I love about the show is there's so many instances of that where, of course, the character in the show is going to interpret that as, yeah, his guys. I mean, even when Edward finds um, Elfla dead, he immediately thinks it's God punishing him, mm-hmm. you know. And we've seen the circumstances. Mm-hmm. And I and on the Dane side, you know, the, when when Brita dies, Uhtred sees the deer. To yeah. him, that's the sign. And then the rain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To us, it's like, oh, you know, it rained. It was probably in exactly. The and and also it also was... when when after Ethelwald is killed, you know, the sun through the through the canopy. Yeah. It's like a bridge yes. to Valhalla and stuff. Exactly. It's like how they cool, interpret yeah. stuff. It, it's it's, and I I feel that's uh, really. We were nice thrown off in Vikings a little bit the first time they like, because because Vikings I think in the beginning felt very grounded in in history in like the first mm-hmm. season and then I can't remember what the first time is but there is a time later on in the later seasons when Odin just shows up in like three places at once. Yeah. And we were just, just like, like oh. that's how they found out Odin Odin's a character now. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the, I mean, it's just different. It, it's different. It works for them. Yeah, and, it does and, for them. It does. And, and 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 it's a different show. So it would be totally weird if that happened in the Last King. I wouldn't like it if they started doing that all of a sudden. In the Last Kingdom. So how they did it, I thought was perfect. Yeah. Um, where Uhtred <laughs> is obviously going to say that's the gods. That's a hundred percent the gods. Oh yeah. And we look at it. It, it rained. It you rained. Know, it just, just like oh, it rained. <laughs> yeah. You just had watched, looked at the forecast that morning, and you would know that it would be raining. So. Yeah, yeah, it's a good show, guys. It's a it's the best show. It's the it's best show time. we've we've watched to this point. We'll see when uh, Heston's escapades comes out. Yes, 
I might, I might just make it myself. <laughs> yes. Hey, if you need some extras, you know, hey, do you I'll just do it in the kill woods us a couple of times <laughs> in the woods of Norway, and you, I'll fly you guys out. Fly us out. We'll get there, and you can like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We'll be. Then you uh, can have a duel. <laughs> yeah. It's great. It's been great. I'm, yeah. I'm very happy to, to, um, to hear that you love it. Were you What's, satisfied with the way it ended too? Like the last moments there? Yeah. You, it was good. Good. Absolutely. Cool. I'm happy, super happy with it. I mean, it teared, it teared me up. So yeah, us too. The nostalgia shots they showed at the end. I know. I just, over. I just love the respect that it felt like it gave to the previous seasons and and the moments. I just, I love that they did that. Mm. Every, everyone that helped Utrid get to where he is, either if they uh, like wanted to or didn't want to or tried to prevent it, mm -hmm. everything has led up to him. Yeah. If I hadn't hung him upside the tree, upside down in the tree, he would never have gotten Bebenberg, you know? No, I know. Exactly. No. In fact, I think what Heston was doing there was doing some like medieval traction, some medieval um, inversion table action. He was actually just helping them out from a physicality oh, yeah, standpoint. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I know Utra never, he never complained about his sciatica again after, after that episode. <laughs> you know, I never heard it mentioned <laughs> once after that episode, Colby. <laughs> I don't think it was brought up People a single interpret time. interpret that scene all wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What were we thinking? How, how has the, the general fan reaction been to your character? And has it changed at all since you've started, too? Dude. <laughs> it's crazy how it's changed. I remember going on Reddit after season two aired. And I had to get off because they everybody hated me. They wow. hated me. But then I kind of, as the seasons progressed, I kind of understood that they hated the character, not the, not me, which is very nice. Yeah. They've, they've shifted. You've all shifted. Yeah. You love me now. Yes. <laughs> which is yes. awesome. I love it. Yeah, I could see after, you know, because season two, Heston is, you know, he tries to do the stuff to Ethelflaed and, um, you know, there's a lot of things not to like after season two and then season three, there's, a lot more even though you don't root for him i don't know there's something about him in that season that you become more lovable and obviously that's just our, one of our favorite last kingdom funny moments is and we've talked about it several times with you is the ethel fled ethel fled yes <laughs> ethel fled uh, that'll always stay with us as one of our favorite yeah. funny moments in the show and yeah he likes to have fun you know he yeah. liked to have fun and just season four just when you meet up with Utrid after uh, Biak is killed and you just start shit talking him for, for no reason. Just no yeah, reason. of course. That's just what, that's just what we do. Uh, Utrid and his pretty boys looking so sad and far from home. Why? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> tell me about it. Let's, uh, why are you so sad, Utrid? I still remember when that trailer came out and all we saw of you was like getting beat up by Alexander Train. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. And then obviously when we, it came out, it was. Yeah. You know, well done, Yepa. On, on yes, show. thank you. Uh, thank thank you. you for for working you. so incredibly hard on it and putting everything you got into it because it's paid off for us as viewers, and we we appreciate it. We we do. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. Um, as I said, it's been a it's been a long it's been you know an era for me yes. in in my life. So and in all our lives. Mm -hmm. We feel so relieved that people love the last season as well, basically. Yeah. Like, okay, great. we got it. We do, we're done. We, we got it done and we did it good. Yeah, we can be I proud would... of it. And yeah. Wow. Isn't that interesting too? Um, to wonder about people who've put years and years and years into a show and actors beyond their control, something happens with that show that's left a bad taste in a lot of people's mouth, which has happened, mm -hmm. obviously. We talked mm -hmm. about a couple of examples earlier. And and I wonder with the actors, you know, how some of them take that. It must be hard. It must be hard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. There's nothing, I, I think I think if, if season five was crap, if I thought it was crap, I would be hurt. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I would be... That would make me really, really sad. That's why it's so fantastic to see the reception it's gotten and everybody loves it. And now it's branching out. Everybody, I mean, yeah. it's still going strong. 
who knows what will happen in the future, hopefully. Uh, you know, all the seasons before this has been strong for a month. And then it's kind of people have watched it three times. And then but now it's still branching out all over the world. It's it's uh, it's insane. So, so what's next for you? Yeah. What, what's next? Summer is coming. OK. I got my boy here. Yeah. How's Solo yes. doing? Solo. He's tired and he's very scruffy looking now. Because uh, I haven't shaved him since, you know, I, I let him get some fur on, fur and fat on for the winter time. Yeah. Now yeah. we're I'm shaving him on Friday, and it's gonna, he's be, gonna look no, good. I, I don't, I don't, it's gonna be good. So I don't know. If there's the pilot that we did. Right. Uh, we'll see what happens with that. Cool. And uh, a couple of other things. I mean. There was things I was going to do in January and February that got postponed. Uh, so at least one of them is coming up in October, I think. So that stuff COVID is happening. Related? The COVID related or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Still. It's tough. It's tough. Is there it's... is there any dream project you want to be in then? We, 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 you're, you're in The Last Kingdom. You were in a big video game. Is there still things yeah. you want to accomplish? What, what else do you want, though? The thing on your T-shirt. Right. Star Wars? About this before we yes about this. That's, that's my biggest dream right now have we you, keep pushing um, for you to be a mando you know, we keep pushing. know. <laughs> have you seen yeah. um have you seen boba fett yet yes i have uh should i've seen it all guys okay good yeah. okay about it. yes okay good because um spoilers by the way for boba fett and the mandalorian um I say Boba Fett, but I really mean Mandal- Mandalorian season three. Uh, 2.5. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like Mandalorian more than I like Boba Fett, to be honest. Me too. I, I do too. I wouldn't have minded to see a little bit more Boba Fett this season. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought it was really cool to dive a little bit more into Boba Fett with the Tusken Raiders, stuff like that, maybe complete his storyline, because it kind of felt like we got the story and then just turned into mando story real real quick um yeah it was it was strange it was strange yeah, yeah it was strange and it felt it felt a bit rushed it did feel yeah rough. yeah like I it mean, was i love but mando it. was mando and then the whole oh, i don't remember his name now oh, who the is skinny he? alien guy the the gunman oh uh oh, oh, oh uh bane um cad bane cad bane yeah 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 that was crazy. I love that character. That was Jesus crazy. Christ. So they have stuff in there that's really cool, but I think as a whole, I like Mando much better. I think. Mm-hmm. Did you like the way season two of Mando ended? I mean, we loved it with um, yeah, with Luke coming in. That was like so. It was yeah, yeah. It was it was great. I loved that. I love that. It's the same. I got the same feeling. Probably a lot of people have said this, but I got the same feeling as the time when you see Darth Vader in Rogue One. Yes, yes. I think we say that in our talk too. And yeah, 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 um, it's just so epic. He's wrecking everything, and he doesn't, you know, doesn't break a sweat, and it's amazing to see. I don't think we really got to see Luke like that. No, sort of no. like prime Luke. Um, just, no, I mean we see him do awesome things. Maybe on the maybe on the barge. In in uh, in episode six, yeah, yeah, on the, true, uh, true. He does go the, nuts. The Sarlacc thing, but uh, but still, yeah. This he just goes ballistic on those droids. It's amazing. It was yeah. great. It was so cool. And I think my only critique, the one thing I would have liked changed a little bit in that season, and not a lot because I loved it. But I think I wish the first time we saw Mando's face was with Grogu. I think that would have been a little bit more impactful. It was still mm-hmm. like, I still cried in that scene. I still like, he's like, yeah, he yeah. already showed his face to Bill Burr. Like, of course he's going to show it. To <laughs> yeah, right? what the fuck, man. Bill Burr knows who knows who you are. So yeah. <laughs> so strange to see. I, I love Bill Burr. Yeah. yeah. Love. I watched everything he does. Yeah. He's awesome. But it was so weird to see. Him I just, I, I literally see him as Bill Burr. In Star Wars, Bill Burr, he doesn't change his character. In a galaxy <laughs> far, far away, it, it literally feels like it's Bill Burr is just there. <laughs> but he's ah, uh, he's so funny. I love him. He's is uh, one of my favorite comedians. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I like sure. him a lot. I like him a lot. Yeah, I saw him live in Oslo a couple oh, of no years way. back. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me and my brother. Our mom bought us tickets for Christmas or something. Oh, cool. And she did what you're not supposed to do. She bought tickets on the first row on a comedy show, and you should never oh, be no. on the first row on a comedy show. But then I think that was just after season two or something, because I had a big beard and long hair. And oh, cool. <laughs> he actually pointed out how oh, he, no. started to, he started to talk about, oh, I'm thinking about uh, the, the whole, I'm thinking about uh, buying a gun routine i don't know if you've yeah, seen yes yeah. and and the whole crowd goes whoa and i don't know why but he looks at me what are you booing for you look like a guy was uh, born with an axe in his hand yeah <laughs> you know I was like hey Bill Burr. <laughs> yeah that's a nice compliment yeah from bill burr <laughs> yeah that was great <laughs> that's awesome and little does he know will work one day <laughs> have you seen tom segura no Try him oh uh, i think you like tom segura. i think i think your sense yeah. of humor you'd like him yeah uh, he's oh, okay. pretty i think he's got four specials on netflix oh really i'll have to check it out yeah he's uh, out. tom segura is, is a really good one yeah Enrique gervais is one of my favorites as well who yeah. likes the last kingdom who likes the last kingdom he does he does indeed him and elon musk Smart people, yeah. smart people like that. Uh, yeah, the Bucks and Antoine Griezmann. Do you remember when we had the the Euros in uh, uh, the European Championship in, in soccer, as you call it? France, France won it, and the striker who scored two goals in that. I think he scored two goals in that final final game. He was asked in the press conference, "What what did you do to you know?" Get you psyched up for the game. I watched two episodes of The Last Kingdom. No, <laughs> so, I didn't hear that's that. Freaking that's freaking awesome. awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's freaking awesome. So I think um, the production sent him the clapper. Yeah. He posted himself with the clapper. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, it's, it's, yeah. So I'm, I'm just waiting for Elon to send me to space now. So Elon, oh, no. if, you, if you're watching this, which you should do, oh, yeah. uh, send me to space. Yeah. That's it. Heston in space. Heston Send in space. Me space. Yes. You would do it? You would actually do it if he said yes? Go to space. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Uh, I mean, have you watched? I want you, to. Have you watched um, on Amazon Shatner go into space? I, I saw I, like I a little it. clip of it on YouTube, you should but watch I haven't it. watched it. You should watch it. It's just an hour, hour yeah. long or something. Yeah. I'm so glad but he went. I got so emotional watching that. I cried. <laughs> it was uh, crazy. I, I think I would too. I'm not and, a huge Star Trek guy, but I, I know how special no, no, it but is. But I mean, and, like a like 90 how, year old guy going, like. I'm so glad it was him. Everything too. he's it's done so, is leading up to him going yes. to space for real, you know? And that's uh, so cool. The, the revelation he has in weightlessness looking down on the planet and it's just yeah i'm gonna check it out i'm gonna check it out so yeah uh i I actually been thinking in my head if i ever got a job in an amazon prime an amazon show i don't need money i just need bezos to send me to space for five minutes (laughs) hey let's go (laughs) i would be terrified guys i would be terrified But man, what an experience, huh? Yeah. Yeah. And in like 40 years, it will be normal. So how cool would it be to be one of the first civilians to go into space? That'd be amazing. That'd be amazing. Elon, come on, Elon. Come on, Elon. Elon. What are you doing right now, man? No, it's it's cool though to see these, you know, people with this huge reach to to shout out the last kingdom for sure. Yeah. And I'm sure they've drawn a lot of people to the show, you know. That's pretty awesome. Now, yeah. you, in your career as a stuntman, Yappa, I'm sure you've done some things that have been sort of terrifying in, in mm-hmm. the, some of the stunts you've done. What's what's something that was like super terrifying at the time that you actually did? Is there anything? I've always had uh, vertigo. Oh, okay. I've always been afraid of heights for some reason. Hmm. So high falls, actually. Okay. Falling from 30, 40, 50 feet. 
that's super daunting. That's yeah. super, that was super terrifying for me, yeah. but I did it anyway. Wow. And I uh, grew a lot. I, do, I did, I grew a lot as a human being in my stunt years because I had to push myself every single day, you know? Yeah. Confront my fears, you know, tuck them in, embrace them. This is me, you know? So, uh, wow. yeah. Being hit by cars and put on fire and fall downstairs and falls from, you know, third floor, you know, that does something to you. That should have been your death. All of those, all together. All of those at the ones. same time. Car. I know. <laughs> but you have, you, Whitgar does the high fall in, yes. you know. Plenty of people Tira, on fire. Tira. With the fire. The fire. Uh, wow. Nobody gets hit by cars. I thought that was weird. Oh, but they get hit by horses. <laughs> yeah, they do. They get hit by horses. They do. Yeah, we have horses. everything. We got you it do. covered. Yeah. Is is there anything you have to say to the fans then of the Last Kingdom here? Is there anything you have to say to them? Uh, I can honestly say that if it weren't for all of you, season four and five would probably not have happened. Maybe even season three. Wow. Yeah. And the support we have had throughout the years has meant so much to all of us. Uh, it's so nice to to go to work and know that in a year's time, people are gonna see, watch this and they're probably gonna love it. Yeah. You know, as opposite to, they're probably gonna hate it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. TOK fandom is the best fandom ever, ever. Yeah. And it's been kind of like a niche fandom. Yeah, yeah. For many years. Yeah. Which has bonded all the fans. I think. Totally. Exactly. That's what that's what made uh, us want to we'll see what happens now. But talk about it. We were just so we felt like it was so niche and and uh like it was ours. Like this is our show. Yeah, there's some yeah, ownership yeah. that you yeah, feel yeah. of it when you don't watch my show. Oh, yeah. wait, what do you do? Watch it. Oh, watch it. Definitely it. watch it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. The only thing I want to say to all the fans is thank you. Thank you for letting us do what we love. It's it's your doing. And uh, I hope you're happy with it. We certainly are. We hope we speak for so many of the fans that uh, we think Heston was such, um, you know, and I, it's sort of like that iconic Last Kingdom role. And he, he survived four seasons. Which, Which is, is amazing. not easy to like do, this, really. you know, as, King. as a Dane, as, as a Dane, as a right? As a, yeah. <laughs> and I, I said it before, I know that they tried to kill me off a couple of times, but they, they haven't. They didn't. Because I just dodge it. And you just dodge. Yeah. <laughs> made it to Bember. Made it to Bember. Made it to be to die made in Bevenburg. all the way to Bevenburg. Two characters I never expected to wind up in Bevenburg. Um, well, Heston, I could see in some ways being around. But to die there and sort of help take it back. And then Aylesworth to move in at the end of the season. How amazing. I mean, <laughs> I just I just want to say this. Eliza has always been amazing. Mm -hmm. But come on. This season, it's, it's just if she doesn't get a, an award for this, I don't oh, know. There's What's gonna be up? Arsling Awards coming up. Um Yes. So we'll have to see what the committee, it's not us who makes these decisions, yes, it's, it's the committee. Oh, oh, oh um, yeah, yeah. You know, so if anybody doesn't win anything, it's not, it's not us. Don't, don't yell at us. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm conflicted about the whole award thing, the Oscars and the Emmys. And oh, the yeah. Baptist and the, I'm, I'm a bit conflicted about it, but still it brings recognition and it gives, yeah. I mean, we've only had one nomination, I think, over the past five seasons and that's held for best uh, female support or something at the Baptist. Or something. But I think that everybody on this show, not myself included, because that would be weird to say, but deserves an award. I think so, we too. think so. Just as a whole, the show deserves all and the whole, awards. And the show deserves not just the series actors, the cinematographers, the directors, it's, it's, the it's writers, everybody. Show. Yeah, costume, make everybody you know, that you can yeah. think of. And I, 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 yeah, and I just know that if I hadn't been in it, I would be a, you know, super fan myself. 
as the fans, we hope we speak for all the fans here when we say thank you, Yepa, for for being such an awesome Last Kingdom character that will forever live in our hearts. Forever live in our hearts. Is uh, You're making me old. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. Can we do the rest of the podcast like this? Yes, please, please can. Do. Daredevil. Yeah, cool. Oh, Daredevil. Charlie yes. Cox. <laughs> there you go. Charlie Cox on the podcast. <laughs> yeah. It's my it's my Mando uh, audition. Mando, yeah, don't show that <laughs> face. face. Don't show the face. Um, yeah, that was no, cool too uh, in the it's, in it's, the new season to have like the debate of cultures they had with uh, Mando and the other Mandalorians and, and Boba Fett. That was cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I love Mando. Mando culture is so Viking like. It's so. It is. It is um, Viking like. Something like Viking samurai put together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And a little bit of cowboy in there as well. Yeah, definitely. Oh, of cowboy. course. Of course. I love it. It would be amazing to be on one of those shows. But hey, we'll see what happens. Yeah, yeah. What else have you watched recently that you've really liked? Uh, Peacemaker. Okay. Yes. I, haven't, I haven't seen it yet. Is it I good? loved it. I love that I love show. it. It's, it's, it's funny. It's super funny. Yeah. Cool. Super funny. Cool. I don't remember because for the past month, I've only been playing games. Okay. I've been and playing good? Elden Ring. Oh, we just talked to Ashin about this. How was it? How I'm not it? done yet. How is it? <laughs> I don't know if you're you're uh, you're aware of the Dark Souls. Yeah, that's what you told yeah, us yeah. before. You didn't really like the Dark Souls. So I hate style. them. Mm. I hate them. I hate the Dark Souls. But I love this game. Really? Okay. I love it. It's so beautiful. It's so and it's it's like for me it's like the um, the perfect RPG because. In all other games, you have like a quest marker and there's, they basically hold your hand, tell you what to do all the time. Right. And you just have to fight a couple of guys and then the mission is done, right? Right. But here is like, would like it would be in the real world. It was like, ooh, what is this? Hmm. Well, somebody might want it. <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> Nobody tells you anything. Right. And there are huge quest lines that you can just completely go past if you don't you know randomly see that person under the tree in the woods over there yeah 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 which starts off a huge quest line if you talk to her or him but gotcha. if you don't then you don't get it done it, i'm, it's, it's I'm really worried nice. it's going to be too big for me um the game i mean everything about it looks right up my alley but i'm i don't like games that are too big this is my, yeah. my only complaint about assassin's creed valhalla and that's just personal like i I prefer like a nice sort of direct storyline sometimes with a little bit of leeway, a little bit of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, the thing is that in this game, you, you can just do the main thing. Okay. You can go the the route. It's going to be hard because mm. you haven't, you know, accumulated enough XP to get more levels or whatever, but you can do it. I mean, I've seen people do it naked with a club as level one, you know? If you yeah. go on YouTube, I mean the 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 fastest speed run is now down to seven minutes, I think. Oh my god! Which is crazy. A friend of mine has over three hundred hours in the game. Wow! It took him it took him about ninety hours to complete the first. He, he's on his new game plus number two, I think. New game plus plus or something. Wow! It's it's just it's an amazing game, and it looks great and. Uh, yeah. It's hard. Yeah. So after playing that for for a while, I uh, just bought the the new Lego Star Wars. Perfect. So I've been playing that, and last got to be similar, right? To Elden Ring, very Ray. similar. Yeah. They're, they're, they have swords, <laughs> no horses though, but they have tauntauns. Cool. Even better. Yesterday I played through episode five, and after that I was so inspired that I had to watch episode five. So yes. I watched Empire Strikes Back last year, last night. Nice. I think I'll just try to rewatch the the last trilogy and see what see what it does for me. I don't know. Yeah, I'm scared to watch it again because honestly, yeah, me too. I'm scared. Um, I justified Rise of Skywalker the first time. Oh no, the first time I watched it, I, I justified it, and I watched it again, and I liked it a little less than the first time I watched it, which I, you know, Last Jedi I did not like from the get go, and I've liked it less every time I've watched it. This is my own personal opinion. I know some people love it, but. Um, yeah, first time I saw Last Jedi, I was I I I was like, and it ended. I was like, I think I, I didn't think I like that. It. I like I, I was it. like, it's, it was like kind of like hit me. I was like, I, 
I don't know if I, I didn't like want to it. admit I it. Have to like it. I didn't I want think to admit I like it. it. It's Star Wars. Do I? I have That's to. That's like right. Yeah. I was like, no. I like Star Wars. I like everything Star Wars. And then, yeah, um, Rise of Skywalker. I was just like, I don't know, man. Like, there were so many like cool I, things, but at the same yes, time, it was so like, many cool things. So but many as cool a whole, things. I don't know. I don't, like, I, it, yeah, to me, it felt like, like he was trying to salvage um, what happened after eight or something, like trying to do the best J.J. Abrams could. And it was just like, I felt like, well, now six doesn't matter because like Palpatine's still alive. Does, does an, anything Anakin <sighs> did, does it matter? Weird. After like eight, Luke weird. was like a bum who it just didn't seem in character with Luke after in episode eight. Uh, yeah. He definitely redeemed in, in nine. And the whole thing is, is like a retelling of four, five, and six for me, maybe, you know? No clear it Turns plan. out the protagonist is the child of the antagonist. Uh, it's like, what? I thought he died and nobody's been talking about him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. It was just, uh, this is weird. It was weird. It is so. But it is Star Wars, you know. Yeah, it's still I love Star the, Wars. I love the title. I love the title. Yeah. Speaking of great trilogies, though, this this here was a yes. great trilogy that we had, though. The the Screen Chronicles and Yeppa Beck Larson. Great trilogy. This is the best trilogy. One and for the ages. Hopefully, um, we, you know, obviously, the Last Kingdom talks are over for, for Heston. But in the future, we'd love to have you back on Yeppa for other, you know, we're going to be following you and your career um, around your house. So I'm going to be following you guys as well. I know where you live now. I have Google Google Maps, I don't know. Google, Google Earth. I moved Great. since the last time we talked. So Fuck. <laughs> I live in a horse barn now. So. <laughs> yeah. I got him in a good stall, though. I got him in yeah. a good stall. <laughs> good. I have 16 yeah. roommates. <laughs> yeah. What What's next for you guys? I mean, you're probably going to interview some more cast and we or maybe to. directors and stuff. And then we're going to continue Yepa, to talk about the shows we love. Although The Last Kingdom is sort of our biggest show to talk about. Like we we still like talking about Star Wars and Batman and Outlander. We've we've gotten a little into Outlander a little bit. So we'll always yeah. continue. Yeah. You know? and I'll, I'll, uh, I'm following you guys as well. So I'll be checking up on you and see if you behave. And if not, okay. you know. You well, if know. you don't behave, like, uh-oh. Attack drones or something. <laughs> I just see a, a Viking ship sailing down the little creek out back here. 30 ships. Just, just, just 30 All of a sudden, ships. When you're down by the creek washing your t-shirts, you'll hear. <laughs> you turn around and you go, yeah. Hey. There's Heston with his tusks and stuff. There it is. Yeah. Yeah, that's I, might, I might dress up as Heston, you know, in 10 years time. Just. To get the feel back, you know, but then you, of course, you have the movie to review and yeah. So we got that. Thank God, out. we were really upset when we heard Last Kingdom was going to be the last season because we knew we had the books and stuff, but they wasn't covering all the books. So to get that news was uh, definitely a little saving grace that we weren't a total disaster after season five. We're in a total wreck, you know. Still really um, emotional after. But season I'm, five. I'm glad but, it's ending well, though. I prefer yeah, it, it yeah. ends well instead of just having a bunch of seasons and getting game of throne or or yeah trilogy i'd I'd prefer that like any me too yeah i totally agree totally totally thank you everybody for listening yep but thank you so much for coming back on this has been another amazing talk you know i'm sure we'll be talking to you again in the future and uh please uh, check out yep's links below follow him and everything he's doing we hope you all uh, like and subscribe to our videos and follow us as well Uh, but for now as we always say Goodbye, and destiny is all. Is all. She will. She will. Yeah. <laughs>